As many of you already know, we have already been in session. We already called the meeting to order at 6 o'clock and then went into closed close session to speak about matters, matters germane to employee and negotiations. So we are now back in open session. For purpose of the records, Allison, can you call roll? Dwight? Yes. Phelps? Rodriguez? Here. Sherpy? Here. Walters? Here. Cervantes? Here. Here. Everyone can stand for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Right now is the moment that we have comments from the public. Allison, did we receive any emails or any motion? Okay. Do we have any presentations to the board this evening? No, we do not. All right, moving right along to the Mac Adam meeting. Folks. Yeah. <laughs> Next up, do I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Any items on the consent agenda that board members have questions of regarding or would like to see removed? Allison? Aye. Yes. Oh, sorry. Are we good? Aye. Turkey? Aye. Walters? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Hunnigan? Aye. Next up, focus area one, relevant skills that lead to employability. First, we have the report, the administrative report on curriculum for Mrs. Springer. You have my building report. Um, is there anything that you have put me on? Are there any questions that you have for me regarding the report? Uh, nothing that you need to like respond here to, but I forgot to email you. I'm interested in an update on the equity leadership team um, progress, training, all that. So if you want to send me an email. Absolutely. Actually, if you could send that email to both me and Member Hunnigan as members of the Red Committee. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Next up, the special education report, Dr. Mashad. Good evening. You should have my report in front of you. Unless you have any questions, I have nothing to add to it this evening. I have one question. Yes, sir. Uh, I see in the later personnel agenda that we're hiring a school psychologist. Yes, what does sir. that put in terms of what we need for the district? It would put us at our basic minimum amount that would allow us to complete our tests without paying for online psych services. Now, Ideally, it would be nice to have four school sites so that they could partition things out and do some counseling along with that, but I would be glad to have three. Okay, are we having an intern next year? We are working on that just to keep things up, and we have one school site who could retire at any time based on where he's at in his career. So we are continuing to pursue getting interns. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from board members regarding the building reports that were submitted? I'd like to give some special recognition to a couple of building reports. Uh, one of them is um, uh, King School. And one of the highlights of last month was the fact that uh, preparations were made to bring back Students for in-person learning, 146 students were a part of Group A, and 148 were Group B for a total of 294 students. It says for the first two weeks of the third quarter, 353 students had 100% attendance, and I just think that's uh, outstanding. And I also looked at the uh, skill. Uh, report and uh, looks like they had a very successful Martin Luther King Day celebration after school where they actually asked their kindergartens what was their dream uh, for the next uh, for, the, for the next year but I appreciate the teachers taking the time to incorporate diversity within the curriculum thank you 
Any other questions or comments from board members? Good, thank you. Any questions or comments regarding the enrollment report submitted this month? <coughs> Folks, we're zooming. Next. <laughs> 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 okay, okay the area two facilities that assist in skill acquisition. First on that is the building and grounds committee report. Member Lyons. I'm going to start. I will. Oh, Allison, can you call up those pictures, please? You know what page they are on this? I bet they have them queued up. You close. Okay. Okay. Well, we have two slides on each screen. We used to have two slides on each screen. <laughs> the one on the left will be what we showed you last month. Well, he's the uh, he's here somewhere too. No, he's not. Okay, okay. Uh, on the left is the same room. It's Lori Eaton's classroom at uh, secondary campus. Uh, last year, last month, when everything was just gutted, and now a month later, you see they've started putting in walls and doorways. Uh, and I'm going to ask. I meant to ask this in the building grounds me. Lee, is there any electrical going on at the same time in those rooms? Yeah, they're start <coughs> they're starting now to do the rough and the mechanical and electrical systems. Okay. So you'll see some of the distead walls in some of the areas will have time to go in and, and some above above. Uh, okay, we have a few more slides with this. What is this room again? This is an English classroom. It will become it will be I should do this to make everybody at home. This will become a, a seven eight classroom, I believe a seventh grade classroom, uh, when it becomes a seven twelve facility. Currently it was Lori Aiden's uh, high school English room. Right. And That's when it has a ceiling, right? Yeah, when it did have a ceiling and lights and all sorts of Iowa things in there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, now it's uh, it, it, and it will once the, the seventh and eighth grade move in, this part of the building will be for the seventh and eighth grade. Good. Here we're looking at the front office hallway toward the entrance. You saw a month ago is one big empty space, and now we have studded in corridor and rooms on both sides of the hallway. If I'm missing something, Lee, please build it, help me. Okay, here's the front office entryway. As you see, there's the entrance right there on the, in the left-hand side, with nothing there. And now we see the counters and the in the spaces as they're being built out. And if you see that window on the side, the picture on the side, the space is driving down pretty much the same thing. There used to be air conditioners hanging there. Uh, it's not there anymore. And I believe in the plans we agreed to a few months ago, those windows are all being replaced now. Is that correct? Or just being re framed? Part of the next bit. Yes. Yeah, so the next bit. Yeah, phase three, the south, the windows on the south elevation will be bit out. Okay. Um, other areas that are not on the south elevation, then it's getting glass and filled. Okay. The so the air conditioners used to be. Okay, the next slide then. One more point. Oh, please. Yeah. Would, would you be able to open the windows at all once the windows are being replaced? I believe the ones that were put back on are not uh, operable. So. That's the decision that was has been done in the last two projects. The additions, no, the additions at Steel, King, and Lombard all are fixed pane windows. Right. With the inter introduction of doing air conditioning um, and have operable windows that really can wreak havoc on balancing the building. So a lot of the new buildings when we bring fully air, air and heat in, they usually don't operate the windows since you're able to control that filtered air more through the air. So in the era of COVID, that's a, that's a good option. Right, because all the new systems that have at least minimums or not above code minimums, outdoor air exchanges. So you're actually sucking the air in from the roof from those outdoor air units versus just trying to bring them in through an operable window. So it's a more of a mechanical means of making sure we're getting those air exchanges in those classrooms consistently. So. Okay, great question. Other questions? Okay, next, oh, this slide. 
Well, uh, what is that? What can be that big? <laughs> so there's the uh, auditorium from the floor looking out. And you see in the right hand slide, there's not much left to the balcony. <clears throat> yeah, I think we have about four or five trusses yet that are um, tied back to that back wall. Um, so they took out the first half and they'll be reinforcing that back wall structurally and then we'll take those other trusses out. But you can see in that picture to the right, um, all the concrete jack, all the seats, all that's left is the red iron. So it is a lot more open and spacious in that space now. So. <laughs> all right, the space are different too. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, we're here we're looking into the auditorium again. Yes. From underneath the balcony, what was the balcony. Uh, you can see in one slide, there still is a deck above you, and the next one, there is no deck above you. And then the slab's starting to come out as well in that space. They're starting to take the slab out, you say? Yeah, yeah. So you can see on the right hand side where those uh, small mini hoe and oh. skid loader is that the uh, concrete slab now removed. It's starting to be removed. Because so. we're changing the the grade, the grade to the bring it up closer, as you bring it closer. Okay. Now we're at the balcony. On the, sa on the second floor, you see a month ago we still had those trusses coming across the ceiling, the former ceiling, and now they're gone. <laughs> and it just leads directly out. And the wall there is gone. Was, you can see directly out into the large open Auditor former auditorium space. So a lot of progress this past month. Now this is the opposite. We're standing in front of the stage, looking back toward it, back toward the balcony. Okay, and this is again the hallway. The balcony to the north side. Mm -hmm. The other direction looking toward the south windows there. And this, can I go back to that for one moment though? There you go. Oh, nope. No? One? Okay, forget it. I'll just look at this one. And the plan for this now is for a 7, 7, 7, 8 cafeteria in this space. It's because it's the hallway Plus going out above the common, up to past that wooden rail, right? Yeah. 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 Above From the end of the trusses. The end of the trusses. Right. And the, re the reason that this is a really good thing, that this would become the 7 8 cafeteria, is that in our planning, we were very limited. Um, we were going to have to look at four lunch periods in the downstairs cafeteria, which was going to mean some students were going to eat before 11 o'clock lunch. Whereas now we can go back to three lunch periods, segregating out the seven days from the 9 12 uh, population, which we can keep at three lunch periods, which means people starting lunch near actual lunch time. So it was a, a really great thing for the facility to be able to do that. Plus, this was such a dead space area where there was really nothing going on. There'll be a lot of seating out there, too, for times when they aren't eating lunch. So, how will they? So, the volunteers get their food? No. no. There will be serving lines upstairs so that we have the elevator, which they can take the food in a cart and go into the elevator, take it upstairs, have it ready in the two serving lines, and there will be one coming from the north side and one coming from the south side so students can just feed right in and eat it up in that area. Right. It's great to see this space being used. Since the first time I saw that high school a few years ago, uh, I thought this is a dangerous, dead space. I mean, that whole balcony area. And now we're going to finally use it as functional space. As I, you've heard me say members building the grounds many times. Any space under a roof we're paying for should be used. And this was not being used and we'll finally be using it. Okay. Now this is the progress building out our shops and classrooms at the rear end of what had been Northwoods Church that we're leasing and have been since August. Uh, you want to tell me where we're seeing Lee? Yeah, so the, the picture on the left, uh, you're standing at what will be the new entrance area. Mm -hmm. 
here. <laughs> Uh, so the one on the left, uh, you're standing at what will be the new entrance. If you're familiar with the space, that's where the overhead doors are. Uh, one of those overhead doors is being converted into a new entry point. And looking down um, this length of the space. To the right, you're starting to see take shape um, some windows and doors that will be into the classroom spaces. And to the left, you see the long hall that you're dividing the wall. Uh, the picture on the right is the, in the back corner of that space is actually the wood shop is what you're seeing there um, I believe mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then so this would be one of those classrooms um, that come off the, the main area you're seeing a window that overlooks the shop and then the door as you walk in so there's two shared classrooms and a computer lab uh, that make up those space and then on the other side of the bathroom group is a health up occupation Classroom. Um, again, just more framing the same at different points. One on the far right, you're seeing all the equipment that was over in uh, the high school um, now is being located and stored temporarily in the back corner of this space till we get it built out and then we'll start setting it with the floor sealed and getting everything set. And what time frame? When should, we, when should we expect to see that facility completed? Uh, the schedule right now is people being put up, so everything's going in the right direction so far. Uh, the big, big question that I know is making sure we get the new call service to the space uh, fired up. So we got the uh, duct, uh, the electrical <coughs> conduit ran to the new transformer location, and we'll work with Cameron to get the new transformer. Uh, we got the sanitary sewer to the building and the water to the building, and we're working on Amber to try to get power and gas now for the new services. So um, that's probably the, the unknown of exactly if we're going to hit schedule with that with Amber. Uh, hopeful everything's tracking that way right now. So uh, <coughs> we'll in April, we'll be able to turn that over to you. Okay, thank you. What about the uh, auditorium, the Amber date on that? Oh, we're in that fence. Oh, I'm sorry. It's right up here. Yeah. Oh, construction-wise. Yeah, construction-wise, uh, the auditorium, uh, we, we haven't bidded out yet. So depending on when bids come, they get contracted out. I would say between Christmas of next year and probably summer, spring break, depending on how things happen um, with the addition, um, we're working through the schedule on that. But it'd probably be more likely uh, the earliest end of that would be Christmas, but more likely it'd be um, the spring break time frame or later. So uh, that's kind of what we're looking at for the, uh, the new uh, performing arts and band and choir area. So. <laughs> you noticed what he said there. Yeah, he and it says auditorium there, but we'd like to look at it as more as than a big empty space to, to gather in but have this performing arts center. Okay, Nick, take it over here. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So we had a building and grounds meeting uh, today where we were able to go over uh, what you can see there, um, which is the performing arts center as well as a new addition to what would be the south face uh, and the south west corner of the uh, 7 through 12 complex uh, working with uh, some of the, the staff there. What's, what's that? Got yeah, bigger. Yeah, bigger. Okay. Oh, it's a bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and <price is> bigger. <laughs> um, so uh, at, at this point uh, still uh, definitely under budget. I don't have the exact numbers yet uh, but uh, one of the exciting things is we're able to address a lot of the uh, wants and needs uh, we're able to get a dedicated and uh, much nicer band and a much nicer choir facility uh, as well as offices and shared practice rooms storage facilities uh, as well as um, identifying uh, and getting uh, ADA compliant uh, wheelchair accessible um, switchbacks to be able to access the Performing Arts Center. Um, 
<coughs> excuse me, uh, access from the commons area into uh, the media control center for the Popolini Hood Center. Access directly from that band and choir area, the addition into the back of the house. That way, uh, students and faculty won't have to come through the Performing Arts Center. They'll be able to go right into the back of the stage. Um, one uh, a really nice feature, and, and you can see it in the upper right corner, you we'll kind of see it anyway, uh, is the integration of the, um, the pit is actually going to be off to the side of the stage. Uh, so one neat perspective will be uh, families that come to uh, performance will actually be able to see the kids and you know, off to the side performing and playing uh, for the shows. Ryan, can you highlight when he's talking about this? Yeah. Shown in the rendering here off to the side stage, the so orchestra stage right for the orchestra enclosure. So they won't necessarily be down in a pit anymore. You'll have better acoustics, and you'll actually have better visual as well to be able to see them performing. <clears throat> um, would you be able to hi highlight just for reference where the existing walls will be, yep. um, as opposed to uh, the new walls for the auditorium? For the so the existing walls of the auditorium, you can see in this kind of stair step area. This is where your exterior building is currently on the south side. And then this is separating your kitchen servery area from the auditorium. So this new wall highlighted in black is the new shape of the auditorium. And then the east wall is the back wall. This has been bid already in the previous bid packet, but everything to the west will be bid in phase three um, bid packet. So you can see the, the compression of the space based on the existing walls versus the new wall. For those who are watching at home and listening, um, can you make sure that everybody is aware that that kind of orange area, right, that that is all new space. When they drive by the high school right now, they're seeing a massive hole in the building, and that hole is going to become packed. So the hole in the building that you're currently seeing is this opening now. There'll be a secondary opening also for the windows, and that's what we referenced earlier. You can see it in the renderings. This is the commons looking from the servery into the commons area, and it's the both window areas. Um, so the window areas are above, and they'll connect into a new corridor, which will access the new band and choir in the front of the building. So if you look at the front of the building now, your main entry um, is just to the east of it, and this is all grass area. Your um, existing uh, parking is sort of over overlaps here, this band fire comes to about six or seven feet within the uh, current sidewalk, or the, the new sidewalk. Um, the new sidewalk is currently about 20 feet further south. So all that grassy area kind of outside that front area of the high school is going to be new band and choir rooms for the performing arts center. Correct. New. Rooms. Right. So, how does the band room compare to the band room we currently have? So people have a perspective on uh, change. It's roughly, I think, 200 to 250 square feet larger. Um, it does not have the tiered floor in it, so it provides an enormous amount of more flexibility for them to move around and um, reorientate seating. So, it's larger. You'll have more volume. I think the current ceiling is at 10 feet right now from the top tier and you'll gain about another six feet total, or almost eight, I think we're, we're 16 to 18 feet in the, the band room. So more volume, um, more floor area, um, and you'll have additional storage in this that you can share between both band and choir rooms. Um, so bigger, more volume are the main, better acoustics, more unlikely, more flexibility. Now, do any of the members have questions? Because their intent is to bring documents to us to review next month for us to approve to go out to bid. So if there are any questions about anything, this is the time to bring them up. Or share your excitement. Or <laughs> <laughs>
Oh. That should leak to the internet. I forgot about that. But no, any questions about this? This is important. This is, important. This is going to be a, a major change in that building. It changes not only the look of that southern exposure, to change the ability to provide fine arts for those children there. Because we're, we're not repurposing the other band and choir. They will still be there. So it allows the capacity to involve more students in more programming. Right. So that you know, thank you, Member Lyon, for clarifying that because it's not that we're getting rid of the other band and choir rooms. It's that we're building these additional spaces to support seven through twelve choir, band, and theater. Right. So additional space to make sure that our students have access. If we do have two separate band rooms and two separate choir rooms, what's the plan for the usage? Well, we are going to have the junior high there as well, so right. it, it gives us more flexibility in scheduling for to be able to, to have those at the same time or, or stagger them a little bit. But also, um, as we progress through the years here, we have just this year when we've added fifth grade band in, we've added a lot more students to our band program. And so we know because we have really great instructors and the interest is high, we feel like the numbers will be a lot higher. And so we also have the, the Performing Arts Center space to be able to use as the band gets larger. So you know, we believe our band can get uh, up over 200 students before it's all said and done. And, and we believe now we have the space to be able to accommodate that with great flexibility. Okay. So, so, so neither of the band rooms are going to be dedicated for a particular grade? It's going to be just as we would right now. Right now, we believe that the new space would be the high school band, and the, the older space would be the junior high band. Okay. Uh, but as time goes on, we're not married to that idea. I mean, we would leave that up to the to the music teachers and the administrators in that building to, to plan for it as best they can. And also, choir. I keep saying band, so we know obviously we want our choir our choir numbers to get larger too. So this this gives us an ability to. Uh, to support both junior high and high school choir at the same time. Is, so one of the concerns that we've heard time and time again is the storage space for theater in the auditorium. What does that now look like under this? So we have grown upon it since the last time I, I showed the auditorium. Um, so there, there's a few opportunities. We have leftover space inside the auditorium um, in our last, in our previous bid, on either side of the auditorium, that can be captured for either general storage or specific storage. But within the band and choir, there is a uh, shared storage room between the both band and choir, and we've added three additional storage rooms. So we have a small storage room off the auditorium. We have a much larger um, storage room that we see fit for all the garments and hats and everything that gets stored between band and choir adjacent um, right to band and choir and then we have a smaller storage room off the stage which could help with some of the stage storage um, items so we expanded upon storage but as you know storage is always the thing that gets shorted um, the first day you move in but we feel like adding these additional storage rooms outside of band and choir they can be flexible with what they're storing and where I think it's also important to note that we have worked with the stakeholders that use these spaces and try to address as many of their concerns and wants as much as possible while remaining fiscally responsible. Okay, one other item that's going to come to us as a change order next month will be lighting on the driveway across the front. Uh, do we have a you can assume there'll be a drive. But currently, there's a driveway that leads to the library, yes. back to the library. So the new drive that was bid in the previous. Why don't you go talk about this project? <laughs> Thank you, Brian. <laughs> He's saving me. I don't have any pretty pictures for this one, but the new drive that was bid in the previous phase two package extends your front driveway from your existing furthest east entry, which goes to north, um, it connects that entry all the way across the front of the building to your existing west exit is all the new drive for bus drop off. 
It also has additional parking on the south side for visitor parking, handicap parking. And in that drive, you're talking or referencing um, new exterior lighting to light that parking area um, in the front. Those poles will be on the south side facing north and lighting that parking and entry access both to the 7-9 entry previously bid and then the existing 10-11-12. So the parking lot currently at the entrance of G, G just north is going to be expanded? Is that so we're on? utilizing that entry uh -huh. and then connecting the drive that you have now. So that drive will extend from where you would enter for G just north all the way west the whole front of the to the whole front right. of the building and that'll all be parking on the south end of that drive but the north lot of so to say okay. the north lot on the east side of the building but yeah the east parking lot is not going to be expanded no it's okay. just the drive is just going to be extended to from that drive to that parking lot all the way to the west side of the building. Yeah. Okay. and that drive we've already approved the previous bid package yeah, yeah. Right. i'm talking about just liking it we're only talking right. about adding light poles right. to light that parking area and that drive. Right. I'm just trying to understand where the new parking is going to be. Yeah. Oh. Sorry to that. Okay, there's going to be a driveway on the south end of the drive with the angle parking for visitors across like the lake. Like we have now in the front of the building. Got it. There's a lot more. Yeah. Got it. Got it. And then your intention, I believe, is to have handicap spaces by the doors, the three doors at the Viva. Yeah. So, well, two doors, the 10, 11, 12 entry, okay. and the 7, 8, 9 entry, and then the rest is there for general parking. General visitor parking. Visitor parking. Yep. So just imagine a parking lot and drive connected along the whole south end of the building. But the parking spaces where the teachers park currently that reserve parking, that'll be gone because that'll be the choir and band building as long as the space is coming along. Correct, yes. So that, that's planned to be removed already. Um, in the new layout, so no rework there either. Doctor, asked, what will we be voting on next month? So next month we would be asking you to approve one the change order for the light, uh, since that was a discussion here, but also uh, to be approving the drawings for the bid documents that would go out to uh, complete the Performing Arts Center and the addition of the band and choir. Correct. There's also another package for furniture for the high school. Furniture, well, and the windows too, I guess. So the windows, yeah. So in addition to what we're calling phase three, which is auditorium renovations, band and choir addition, there is also glazing that we've identified that we previously identified but didn't feel like could fit in the budget. But since we were so far under budget, we're trying to add it into phase three. And those are all the right. single pane windows um, throughout the existing building that are scheduled to be replaced. That could have been a future project, but feel like we can get it into this project. Well, and it'll add some uniformity to the front of the building. So right now we have the, I don't know what color that is, brown, gold, yes. brown band yeah. on it. Yeah. Uh, windows that are single pane, and we'd be taking those out and getting, are they double or triple pane? Double, double pane windows. But the, the glazing of all the metal work will look similar to the new addition, so it all have a uniform front of the building. So all the existing windows of the, <coughs> the existing library are single pane. Right. That's the majority of the single pane windows if you want the library. A lot of those are single pane. Really? Yeah. And they're really big. So to summarize, we'll be voting on auditorium, lighting, glazed windows. So there'll be two packages you're approving, so we'll have two separate bid documents for you to approve. One will be phase three, which includes glazing, band, choir edition, and auditorium as one package. And then there'll be a second furniture package to approve to go out to bid. And then the third is a change order to add lighting to the front part. Thank you. What does glazing mean? Your, your windows are glass. Glass, your windows. windows. Oh, it's a window. Okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. <laughs> No. no, that's okay. That's that's a bad There's probably someone out there watching this. Maybe Jay was watching. No. <laughs> well, so essentially, for anybody who's still watching at home, so most of the windows you see from the outside would be changed, although most of the windows that are in there, well, all the windows in the courtyard are staying the same, right? So there are a couple courtyard windows that are single pane, 
and they're the ones that are in the stairwells correct on the correct. north end so they're they're spread out throughout the building so it's hard just to say this area there's a couple up next to the auditorium on the north side right there's the ones in the library so there's there's a handful in module j on the second floor we tried to identify all the single pane because yeah. it's very very cold yeah uh, near those windows right now thank you brian well thank you lee Anything else from the Building and Grounds Committee? All right. Next up, do I have a motion to consider approval of the line of credit for the F&M Bank for GABC? Uh, second. Overlying, <laughs> that's a disappointment. Um, Ms. Tam. <laughs> Last month, we discussed the line of credit um, that we are asking to be approved tonight for the GABC. Um, the documents are in front of you. We have um, the final principal amount of two million five or sorry two million five hundred dollars with a two point nine five percent interest rate. Uh, we'll begin payments on March fifteenth of twenty twenty one, and we'll complete the loan obligation on February fifteenth, twenty thirteen. Does anyone have any questions about specifics of the loan documents that you have? What was the year we were going to, you said 2031, 2016. You said 2013, I was like, we're going back in time. Yes, we're going to. Okay. Sorry about that. Any other questions from board members? Why is it more money again than the project cost? We're putting money in for furniture then or something? Right. So, um, this is extra things that GABC may need. So Mr. Houston needs to purchase some equipment, um, some other items. They've been able to save some money in the last few years, about $375,000, as a matter of fact, quite a bit um, that he's using to purchase new equipment. But this will give us a little cushion for those items that we need to ensure that it's outfitted. So some of a small portion will be for furniture, but a lot of it is just equipment that they need to upgrade their program. Sounds exciting. Again, upgrading the program. Are we catching on? Are we catching on to the theme? Additional resources, updating equipment. These are good things, positive things for our students. Any other questions? Alison. Rodriguez. Aye. Sherpy. Aye. Walters. Aye. 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 Yes. Next up, do I have a motion to consider approval of the Spesis Change Order Request for the GHS Project? So moved. Second. Ms. Pam. So, this is a good thing too, that we're getting rid of asbestos, um, but unfortunately we had an additional change order. Uh, we had our first change order for 6000 was six thousand one hundred sixty dollars they did find additional asbestos on the first floor in the hallway with um, the office and the social studies the old social studies classrooms so that additional abatement um, will be thirty four thousand four hundred dollars any questions and our threshold is twenty five thousand correct correct right okay they've already done this work though correct correct okay so it was, wasn't, wasn't really optimal. Right. It wasn't optimal, but we couldn't, we couldn't approve the change order, so we needed to bring it to the board. And again, where is this asbestos being removed? Um, well, we're doing multiple areas of the high school currently, but this is additional asbestos that was found um, in the main office corridor at JHS. So if you know where the main office is, um, heading from west to east. There were locations on both sides of the hallway in classrooms and in the main office. Well, thank you for including that in our package. You're welcome. I love the picture. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Allison? Uh, very good. Aye. Sherpy? Aye. Walter? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Cunningham? Aye. Ryan? Yeah. All right, next up, focus area number three, responding to the changing needs of our community. First item under this agenda area is the update on the status of e-learning and in-person learning. <laughs> Dr. Axelson. 
All right, so I actually think this should be a brief uh, presentation tonight. So uh, we spent a lot of time talking about this at meetings, so I'm just gonna catch you up on things that uh, have happened since then. So um, we received clarification from First June today. They do have enough buses ready to go, so we can start on uh, February 27th, which is wonderful news. Um, we are working on uh, a callback plan for our food service workers. Uh, for those of you out there that are listening at home, we will be having a, a special board meeting on Friday to call back people um, for uh, our first day of in-person learning. We still have uh, some outstanding impact negotiations with the GEA on Thursday night, that afternoon, um, and members Sherpy and Lyon will come here again uh, and we'll help out with the negotiation on that so that we can uh, also do a formal recall of our paraprofessional workers. Um, so uh, we are keeping the food service workers and the paraprofessionals uh, callbacks on hold until Friday until we make sure we have all the negotiations completed. And we believe we have all of their plans ready to go. We met again this morning at a central office level to make sure that we had I's dotted and T's crossed and we feel as if we are uh, ready to go for our in-person learning starting on February 22nd. So uh, as of right now, the plan is still to uh, commence that on Monday morning, February 22nd. Questions from board members for Dr. Asplund. I have one, and, and he and I have already discussed this, so it's not a surprise. Um, are we working on, or do we have a plan in place for feedback? Some of the things that we've heard, obviously, are concerns from our remote families as we transition back to in-person learning and making sure that they're still having as quality education as possible in that in that in-person majority to remote um, learning ratio. So. I'm assuming that there's some kind of feedback loop that we're going yes, to provide families. Yes, uh, we will. We will put out uh, some notification to all families, but especially for those families who are going to be uh, continuing with their children in e-learning. Uh, we will have a feedback loop established, and we will uh, put that announcement out here uh, as soon as we're done getting all the final touches on that. Um, and I, I guess I want to touch on a couple things. So I've heard some concerns from some families who are going to remain in e-learning. Um, that were concerned that the, the, the current schedule seemed to work for their children and this was you know, going to be an abrupt change. And, you know, really, I, I don't have an eloquent answer for that other than there are only so many minutes in the day and, and we can't really have everybody in class fully and uh, continue the same e-learning schedule. It just is, is unworkable unless we were effectively doubling our staff and we don't have the ability to even fully staff now because we have open positions. Um, so we know that it's going to be a big change for our students that are at home. Uh, we know it's going to be a big change for our teachers teaching in the classroom. Uh, and you know, we just feel like we need to put our best foot forward if, if after a few weeks, as I've told the staff that I've spoken to, uh, if after a few weeks we feel like the, the plan isn't, isn't optimal, uh, we will gather a group of folks together to revisit what we're doing and try to tweak the plan. But the goal isn't to blow up the plan. I mean, I think we have to uh, continue forward with the idea that we are going to be teaching in-person full days every day, uh, and we can adjust accordingly, but I think it would be more like, you know, painting the fire hydrants in the street, not like changing the location of them, okay? I mean, it's, it's not going to be massive change. It's going to be uh, you know, tiny modifications as we can, as we can do them. Um, we've asked for everybody's patience this year, and we've, and we've gotten it, and we really appreciate it. Um, it's just this is a unique year and everything about it's going to be unique and uh, you know the, the, <clears throat> the amount of feedback we've gotten so far from the students I am just speaking about the students although I've heard from many police parents uh, the students that have been in person has been fantastic and we feel like that's that's the momentum we want to carry forward that our students who are coming back are feeling great about it uh, our staff is feeling great about it and, you know not everybody's feeling great we'll acknowledge that fully but feel like we're now in a position uh, where the infection rate in Knox County is right around 1% and people are getting vaccinated and you know we need to respond to the facts in front of us and uh, 
we're going to continue forward with that plan, but we're not doing it with blinders on. If, if the facts dictate that we change that plan going forward, we will. But right now, we just need to focus on what we said we were going to do, and we intend to do that starting February 22nd. Do we have a, as you've been reaching out to families to see who is going to return on the 22nd and who's opting to stay remote, do we have percentages? Yeah, I can actually I can supply that to you. Uh, we do have that broken down uh, by. Uh, I didn't bring it tonight, but we do have it. I can absolutely share that with you uh, tomorrow. Okay. So yeah, we do, and, and I will. I would like to applaud our staff that reached out, whether that be outreach workers, principals, deans, secretaries, uh, who reached out individually to parents to make sure that everybody was, was contacted. That was a lot of effort because we had roughly a thousand people that didn't respond to the survey. So we had to individually contact about a thousand folks. Um, and so I know there are still a few people that have not returned calls, but by and large, we've gotten everybody and that's only through the hard work of our staff. And I really appreciate that. So this is just a little plug to people in the community. Ask your friends and ask your neighbors if they responded to the district regarding in-person or remaining remote. And if they haven't, encourage them to contact their school building so that we can make sure that we know and that they know that we know, that they know, that this is the plan, so that nobody feels left out. Well, and I do want to make a clarification too. So as I said, we learn from things and we adapt. So the first time we did this, if you didn't respond, we assumed you were remote. Well, what we learned from that was people sent their kids to school anyway. So this time we flipped it. We said, if you didn't respond, you're in person, because it felt like that was what the evidence was showing us. So uh, if somebody has not responded and we have not been able to reach them, we are assuming that their children are coming to school and we have made plans accordingly. Dr. Espen, I was looking at the dashboard. Uh, it appears no one has gotten sick, teacher, student, or staff. Am I correct? We've had many people that have been excluded for factors outside of school. We do not know of anybody that has had the virus transmitted to them at school. Uh, we. We do know we've had some folks that have contracted it. We do know that. Um, but that is a very tiny percentage of the total number of people that have been uh, quarantined. Not this week at all, no. No, that, as a matter of fact, the last time I know somebody, I know personally of somebody who actually was COVID positive was more than two months ago. Any other questions from board members? I have one other thing I should probably make sure everybody, because I've gotten a lot of feedback on this too, and I want to make sure I'm going to answer a question that hasn't been asked tonight. The district has absolutely no authority or ability to get people vaccinated. Um, it is not our choice that we weren't able to get people vaccinated. I'm not bashing on the decision to prioritize elderly. We have a lot of elderly people in Knox County. I applaud the, the health department for putting out all the efforts they have. We actually are one of the leaders in, in the state for how many people have been vaccinated. We, Knox County did not prioritize school people. I'm not saying that's bad. In Warren County, they prioritized school people and the elderly got upset with them. So, I mean, you, you, you just can't please everybody, but I just want everybody to understand, we are trying to get people vaccinated as much as we can. It's not like it's a streaming supply that's here all the time. We're trying to notify people once, once we're notified. We're doing the best we can to try to get people in. Uh, we're, we're, our administrators are being very flexible and trying to give people at least time to go get vaccinated if they have an appointment. Um, we even had one administrator, and I'm gonna just say her name, Minnie Ritchie, who gave up her spot for somebody else who she felt was more vulnerable uh, to get vaccinated. So, I mean, our folks are doing wonderful things and trying to get everybody uh, vaccinated as fast as we can. I understand people are frustrated um, and we're all frustrated with the virus, but being frustrated with the school district is building a place because we're doing everything we can. Next up is 
um, do I have a motion to consider approval of the 2021-2022 school calendar? This is first reading, so this will just be discussion, but do I have a motion? So moved, Hunnigan. Second. Dr. Eisman. Thank you. The calendar committee met a few different times, and our calendar committee does a wonderful job. They have a building right from every building. We go through, basically how it works is I say, look, we can't start school before August 25th because of construction. So that can be our earliest start date. And I said, typically we like to get out before Memorial Day. That's not a must pass, but that's kind of where we like to live. And here it goes again. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, after that, you guys give us your feedback on what you want to do. And so we really let the building reps kind of work through that, that uh, problem. And uh, the building reps, as usual, did a fantastic job. Uh, reached consensus in about an hour. Uh, took it out to the building. Uh, the building made a slight tweak in the schedule. And the one you see before you is the one the committee is recommending. I think it looks like a very good calendar, very workable calendar. Um, and it, I would welcome any feedback from any of you if you had it prior to next month, where absent any other feedback, this would be the calendar we'd be asking you to approve for next year. The, the, the quarter dates aren't mm -hmm. as important. We kind of thank you with those. Typically, your third quarter is the longest one. Uh, and the reason we put third quarter is the longest because that's where your state testing is. So you kind of assume a few days that aren't going to be instructional. Um, right, and we will need to adjust some of that as we look at it. But in terms of total number of days, it needs that up to 185. Uh, the other thing that the committee didn't want us to do, and I'll have to put this in for a later date, this year we had a, a waiver for uh, e-learning days, remote learning days. So the committee said we'd like to see next year if we could do all snow days as e-learning days. We'd like to try it to see if it works. So I'm not going to promise that we'll try it for every day, but uh, we need to be able to have, uh, there's a process we have to follow through the regional office and then agree with the, with the DBA to make it even possible. So that's something we'd have to do in later months uh, to look at that. So that only gives us the flexibility, it doesn't mean we have to do it, but it's just something to consider. I see we've added a spring break back to the- that was, a big, that was a big deal to the faculty. They said we really want to try spring break again. I said, well, might have to with starting after August 25th, so I wasn't going to push one way or the other. I will tell you all the a, a prelude to next year's discussion is going to be a lot more lively. So next year we have air conditioning in every building. We can start whenever we want. We may want to consider the efficacy of a balanced schedule. Mm -hmm. Balanced calendar. When we have this discussion next year. Oh, for the power power. Power. okay. Sorry. Church will still want to have air conditioning, but that will not be a concern. <laughs> 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 okay. Right. We won't be there. So for the 22-23 school year. I would say that that is one of the reasons why we went this option. Right. And I will remind everybody immensely, every opportunity that I have, <laughs> that it was the 13 listening forums that we conducted where climate controlled schools were the number one response by a very large margin and by a very large margin the people who took part in those 13 listening sessions were probably majority staff of district 205 we have the records <laughs> to show that so i'm smiling underneath my mask if you can't tell it's an exciting thing to be able to have everything that we're going to Dr. Esplan, I know we made some tweaks when it came to the 2020-2021 schedule based on having faculty in for a long period of time. We had some institutions mm -hmm. and some things wrong. And just looking at this, um, you know, from February 22nd to April 8th, looks like there's a long stretch. Is that anything of concern? That was a point that was discussed in the in the committee, but uh, the committee members thought as long as there was a spring break there that they were looking forward to, they thought it would be okay. 
something. But yeah, that was definitely a point of discussion, but that was a long stretch. So that's one of the things we always look at. Is there a 20 day stretch where there's no breaks? Because that you, you, get, you end up getting more truancy discipline issues and, and that. So they thought this was something we're trying for a year, but we acknowledge that is definitely a feature of this of this calendar that the month of March could be challenging. We can also think about moving spring break away from a particular holiday because it does not have to be tied to a particular holiday. Well, and, and quite honestly, this was done not for that reason in that the discussion was typically when we've had spring break, it's when the weather's terrible. Yeah. And they thought maybe if we had it a little bit later, people would be able to actually go outside and take advantage of a spring break rather than mm -hmm. staring at the rain. Yeah. So um, that was actually the impetus for moving it to where it is this time. They haven't to based on that holiday there, but that wasn't, that wasn't the reason. All right, board members, if you have any other thoughts or questions, bring them back to, well, give them to Dr. Aslan if it requires a, a you know, a big change. To yeah, the I would need to reconvene the committee then. But yeah. um, otherwise, be ready to vote on the final product next month. All right, next up, report on negotiations. Member Lyon. Well, we've been meeting for 10 months. Uh, Currently, there's not a new contract. The teachers and other people covered by the contract are working under an expired contract. It just continues on. Since the last meeting, we've had two sessions. One was a Saturday session, we met for seven hours. As a result of what we looked at as the lack of measurable movement, we are filing a request for assistance from the Federal Mediation Service. And GE's agreed with us to move forward on this. But we plan on not ending negotiations during that time. We plan to continue working toward full agreement on the 51 outstanding issues, which include the salary and wages for all GE member groups. So while we're looking for assistance, we'll continue seeing if we can reach closure on the outstanding items prior to assistance even showing up. And we're meeting again Thursday, Thursday afternoon. Thank you. Anything else? No, we'll sit. Thank you very much. Next up, moving on to personnel. Do I have a motion to consider approval of the personnel report? So moved. Second. And just to clarify, this is as amended per our conversation in closed session upon Thursday's meeting. Allison? Walters? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Cervantes? Aye. Aye. Next up, grievance update. Dr. Aslan. We currently have no outstanding grievances. And Boya? We had two. We had one from Holy and Mansfield regarding asbestos. It really isn't about the school district. It's a, uh, it's a lawsuit on a third party, uh, but we're mentioned in it not suing us it's we're basically getting rid of the other party's defense and then illinois retired teachers association sends them every year just to find out who our retirees are we comply with both all right now we have comments by the board member walters uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, i am excited uh, for the first time in a long time the the schools uh, um, there was a lot of buzz and excitement in the schools. People are happy uh, that the kids, uh, the students are inside the schools. Uh, I know my own children came home, uh, completely different children, just from uh, the one day that they were, apparently no one wants to be talking to. Uh, from the one day that they were able to attend on the Thursday, because uh, unfortunately the, the Friday was um, you know, moved to a remote day because of the weather and for safety. Um, but, you know, the feedback uh, was overwhelmingly positive uh, as we move towards full five-day. Uh, you know, I'm hopeful that we will look through some of the concerns uh, that have been brought up, um, you know, just identifying and working through how we will um, make sure that it is equitable for the, the students that stay remote uh, and ensuring that uh, the workload for everyone uh, is uh, equitable. 
uh, but I applaud everyone in the buildings, uh, looking at the building reports, all of the uh, contacts that the staff are making, making sure that the students are uh, completing all of their work and getting the resources that they need, the faculty uh, for thinking outside the box and coming up with new ways to engage the students in this unprecedented time. Uh, you know, thank you. Uh, I applaud you guys. This is amazing. Member Rodriguez. Can I get a comment? Member Sherkin. Yeah, no comments. Member Hunnigan. This is the, the next to last of my uh, being on the board, and I'll reserve my comments for next month. All right. Member Lyons. I'm also really excited to see students come back into our schools. These are the schools we remodeled, we fixed up, and the first time any of them saw them was last week. That we look forward to everyone having the opportunity here in a few weeks. Uh, just a piece on the radio the other day, I heard you know, the research, they were all worried about schools being spread or places, and the research is they haven't been in schools that have been in session for months. So I hope we, we, we complete the continue the information dollars the experience other schools have had i'm just so excited that we're able to do this for our kids and lastly uh teachers that are reinvent what they're doing they did a nice job but you're also going to reinvent yourself again to don't teach with a math stand and all that and thank you very much for doing it um just a few comments from myself um in response to some things I've heard since the special meeting, I uh, just want to go on the record and say last week's special meeting when we were sat here for hours was not the first time that this, this congregation of board members have had the discussion about returning to the classroom. We've spent actually countless hours at our board meetings since last March talking about the decision and how to do it safely. So. Sometimes it can be a new information when you're just tuning in for the first time, but we do have our meetings recorded and up on our website if you ever want to check back on any of those and see the lively discussions that we've been having for the past close to a year. For those of you who would like to have our meetings streamed, like live, so that you're not waiting for a recording, the like us on YouTube. Isn't that right, um, Mrs. Right. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We're at 491. We need 1,000. We need a thousand subscribers in order to be live streamed and we have 491. Okay? Um, and the other thing is, just to reiterate that we do receive, as board members, we receive a lot of emails. Um, and I want to acknowledge to particularly parents and, and the educators who res to reach out to us a few things. We do read those. I will be very honest and say that I work a full time and a half job. And so I'm not always able to respond to those emails, but I do read them. And I do forward the information that is necessary to the parties needed. Typically that's Dr. Asplin, so that you can reach back out to building administrators, so you can have conversations with teachers about concerns that they have or parents so that parents know which educator, which administrator they should be reaching out to. So I don't want you to feel like you're not heard. You are heard. But I would also take this opportunity to remind you that if you have a concern about safety, about learning, we do encourage you to actually talk to your teacher. If you feel like that conversation hasn't gone anywhere, reach out to your teacher. show and being pulled off um, reach out to the building administrator and then reach out to us you know our role is is a little bit different than the day-to-day -day, and we don't want you to feel unheard and we don't want you to be unheard um, but we want you to really take the opportunity to talk to the people closest to your issues okay um, I think that's it any future agenda items I know. Oh, I guess I will say just one thing. It is really exciting to see those pictures. 
like I sit here and I'm kind of in awe at how much we've been able to do with our buildings. Like, I mean, wow. All from the mind of Brian. I am excited. <laughs> I am excited. All right. So, future meeting, uh, we will have, as uh, was stated earlier, there will be a special meeting Friday morning pending uh, impact bargain negotiating on Thursday. Um, and then our regularly scheduled meeting will be back here Monday, March 8th. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Allison? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 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 Aye.